Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Roseboro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Do you guys remember John Gray? We've covered him a lot, uh, going all the way back to the podcast uh, era of Fighting for the Faith. And yes, we're going to be bringing the podcast back in basically taking the audio from our videos and putting them into a podcast form for people to, uh, to track. And we will actually be going back through the archives and trying to bring all of the stuff back that uh, we haven't covered in the podcast over the past few years. But uh, that's a, that's something to look forward to in the weeks ahead. But uh, back in the podcast era, we covered John Gray. John Gray was a fellow that was, uh, I'd like to say, was a diseased release by the Wuhan lab over there at, uh, at Lakewood. Uh, yeah, where Joel Osteen holds sway. Yeah, that's right. That's where they incubated this false teacher and then sent him like a disease into the uh, into the church and boy is he he delivering on doing the demonic work of the devil rather than actually doing the works of Christ and i know that's some pretty powerful rhetoric but um, i stand by every bit of it what we're going to do today we're going to head over to john gray's church and we're going to listen to him overtly exploiting the people that have showed up to go to church there uh, by giving, making promises for God that he has not made, all for the purpose of basically scratching their itching ears. And the, the sad bit is, is that the people there are eating this up. They think that this is a word from God when, in fact, it isn't. It is a clear example of a false prophet and a false teacher exploiting people, making merchandise of them in their greed. So uh, let, let me whirl up the desktop, and I think you'll kind of get what I'm saying here. Uh, yeah, sunset in uh, in in Ardoch, um, North Dakota. There, but uh, let's let's do this. Let me whirl this up, and so we're heading over to John Gray Ministries YouTube channel and uh, listening to a portion of a message called "The Purpose of Power." And man, I, the manipulation is so thick. It's, it's just beyond obvious at this point. But sadly, the folks there at uh, his church don't know their Bible. I wonder why. Do you think he rightly handles God's word and preaches it correctly? Not on your life. And as a result of it, they are legitimately easy targets for the devil and for a greedy false teacher like John Gray. Let's listen in and see what he does here. Good morning once again, Relentless Church. God bless you. Can you just give the Lord whatever praise you think he deserves as we get ready for this scripture this morning? This will be the last time that I ask you to stand until the end of the service. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not standing for this. <clears throat> I don't think you know what's about to happen in the next 25, 30 minutes. And here it is. This is the big setup. I, you have no idea what's happening in the next 25, 30 minutes. Oh. It's, it's going to be practically Christmas there at Relentless Church. But everybody on your row and everything in your life is about to change. No, it isn't. What are you talking about? Oh, <clears throat> From the first prayer that my mother prayed when she was made aware that she was carrying a child to this very moment, my life was curated for me to release this word to you. Uh, are you the Messiah? Wow. Talk about being full of yourself. Let, let me back this up. Just, just listen to what he says here. From the first prayer that my mother prayed when she was made aware that she was carrying a child, to this very moment, my life was curated for me to release this word to you. Wow. <clears throat> Man. Man, that that one kind of frosts my cookies. That that one kind of makes me upset. Uh, let, let let me explain why. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, I like I love Luke's account. Uh, Luke gives us all the details regarding the nativity of Christ. And, uh, and beginning with God fulfilling his prophecy that he would send a forerunner to who would prepare the way for Jesus. And so we have uh, the information of the miraculous birth of John the Baptist. Man, and it's a great story of, of how Elizabeth conceived, but uh, God sent an angel to speak to Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, who was serving as a priest in the temple. 
And when Zechariah heard the words, uh, he didn't believe. And as a result of it, he was made mute until the time when John was named. Um, But listen to what this says. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee and named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, well, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born, to be born will be called holy the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who has been called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of Yahweh. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Yeah, I would note there are some notable births in human history. Uh, Most notable is the birth of Jesus Christ. Second, John the Baptist. A few others in the Old Testament, maybe the birth of Isaac, if you think about it, right? That's kind of a notable birth as well. But what has John Gray done here? He's tried to smuggle himself into that group. From you know, from the moment my my mother heard that she was going to give birth to a child, this is very, listen to again how he says this. From the first prayer that my mother prayed when she was made aware that she was carrying a child to this very moment, my life was curated for me to release this word to you. Uh, These are the words of a false Christ. These are the words of a false prophet. These are uh, the words of somebody who loves himself. Uh, scripture warns us about men like this. A couple of notable warnings. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 says, False prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, uh, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. That's what John Gray is. He's a greedy person, and you're going to hear how he's going to totally exploit these people with false words, false and empty words that are not from God, like not even close. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 puts it this way, understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Uh, We're in them now. Uh, People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, Always learning, never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men who are corrupted in mind, disqualified regarding the faith, they'll not get very far. Their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. Yeah. Folly is a good way to put it. But this guy thinking that he has some kind of special, miraculous birth... (laughs) <laughs> lover of self indeed this is satanic this is not christian i've traveled the whole world many times but there is no more sacred assignment than the one that i hold today because i firmly believe that in the- really y- y- there is no sacred assignment greater than the one you hold today what about the sacred assignment given by jesus christ hmm 
is yours greater than his? How about the sacred assignment given by John the Baptist? Or given to John the Baptist? Is your assignment greater than John the Baptist's? Really? Man, this is so bad. This Again, I blame the Wuhan lab at Lakewood in yeah in Houston, Texas, where uh, where Joel Osteen holds court. Uh, he's responsible for releasing the John Gray virus on the body of Christ. Heard to you, I've traveled the whole world many times, but there is no more sacred assignment than the one that I hold today, because I firmly believe that in the next few moments there are people in this room who will forever go into a new dimension of power, purpose, and prosperity. And these are not church games, and this is not a show. This is not a drill. This is real power. The no, it's not. No, no, this is real power. You are lying through your teeth, sir. Living God is here, and he is about to meet with us in a strange way that has never happened before. Don't be scared. The only thing that should be scared in your life is devils. If you hear a preacher preaching like this, run. Literally run like your life depends upon it, because you have no idea when God's judgment is going to fall on such a man. I'm going to say that again. The only thing in your life that should be terrified right now are devils that thought that they could hold you hostage, people that thought they owned you, people who think they deserve a part of what God is doing in you just because they were close. God Notice how the music is used to manipulate as well. He is manipulating these people. What, what, what biblical text is he preaching from right now? He's not. No, he's scratching itching ears. That's the other part of it. It's a clear sign you're dealing with a false teacher is when they scratch itching ears. Paul charged Pastor Timothy, a uh, pastor of one of the congregations in the city of Ephesus, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who's to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And they'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Yep, it's a complete myth that uh, uh, John Gray has had a special birth and that his life has been curated up to this point and that there's no other sacred assignment greater than the one that which he carries that day. All completely narcissistic nonsense. Devilishly so. People who think they deserve a part of what God is doing in you just because they were close. God is doing something for you in your house that you have not seen. You think you read, I has not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him, but he has revealed them. Don't do it, don't do it, ma'am, don't do it. God has revealed. I want to talk to some prophetic people today who can see past circumstance. I want to talk to a couple of praying people who know that the only reason that you are where you are, have what you have, watch this, and are about to step into the greatest financial, spiritual, emotional, and relational season of your life. Man. So John Gray is exploiting the people who've shown up to church exploiting them with false words, making promises that God has not made, and promising them a, a, a breakthrough of a financial season that they have yet to experience in their life. God has not promised this at all, nor is God required to make these false words come true. Far from it. In fact, let me, let me see if I can do this real quick here. I'm, I'm thinking of another false prophet who gave false words, um, and he is found in the book of Jeremiah. All right, so in uh, in Jeremiah chapter 27, we get the uh, the setup here. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, the, this word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh. Thus Yahweh said to me, make yourself straps and yoke bars and put them on your neck. Send word to the king of Edom and the king of Moab and the kings of the sons of Ammon and the king of Tyre and the king of Sidon by the hand of the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, the king of Judah. Give them this charge for their masters. Thus says Yahweh Savaoth, the God of hosts, the God of Israel. This is what you shall say to your masters. It is I 
who by my great power and my outstretched arm have made the earth with the men and animals that are on the earth, and I give it to whomever it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He's my servant. And I have given him also the beasts of the field to serve him. All the nations shall serve him and his sons and his grandson until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings shall make him their slave. But if any nation or kingdom will not serve this Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, I will punish that nation with the sword, with famine, with pestilence, declares Yahweh, until I have consumed it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your fortune tellers, your sorcerers who are saying to you, you shall not serve the king of Babylon. For it's a lie that they are prophesying to you, with the result that you will be removed far from your land, and I will drive you out, and you will perish. But any nation that brings its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will leave on its own land to work it and to dwell there, declares Yahweh. So you can see the setup here. God has had uh, Jeremiah create a prop, if you would. And the prop is a yoke. And along with the yoke goes the message from the real God. And you're going to note Jeremiah's prophetic record, 100%. Everything that he said will happen, will happen. In fact, uh, at, at to this point, you know, Nebuchadnezzar actually comes in the first round of exiles have now left Jerusalem and have been marched off into Babylon. And Jeremiah continues to preach with this yoke around his neck, calling the people of Judah to submit to the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar. And if they do, they will live. Well, there was a false prophet by the name of Hananiah. And Hananiah, he got his prophetic credentials from the Jennifer LeClaire School of Supernatural Prophecy, uh, paid his $500 activation fee and set up a YouTube channel. You kind of get the point. That's the kind of wackerdoodle that we're dealing with here. And Hananiah believed that God was talking to him when God wasn't. And watch what happens. Hananiah opposes the true prophet Jeremiah. So in that same year, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, Hananiah, the son of Azur, the prophet from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of Yahweh, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of Yahweh's house, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares Yahweh, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Scratching, itching ears indeed. But here's the thing, God didn't give this word. And who is Hananiah opposing? God and his true prophet, Jeremiah. And he's filling these people's heads with lies and words that God has not given to him. So the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of Yahweh. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. (laughs) You can almost see Jeremiah say, sure, whatever. Uh, Yeah, amen. May Yahweh do so. May Yahweh make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of Yahweh and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of the people. And here's the thing. Note, the hearing of the people is the important part. Because who was he speaking to? Who was Hananiah speaking in the presence of? Not only the people of Israel, but the priests of Israel the priest of Jerusalem, who should have known their Bibles well enough to know that Hananiah was a wingnut and a wackerdoodle. But did they stone him the way they were commanded by the Mosaic Covenant? Did they silence him the way God's commandments command you to do with a false prophet? Not at all, right? So God's going to have to take things into his own hand, and he does. 
So now hear this word that I speak in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, pestilence against many countries and, and great kingdoms. Jeremiah here is referencing the Bible, the prophet Isaiah and other prophets whose prophecies are now part of the official canon of Scripture. Jeremiah's prophecy will shortly become part of the canon of Scripture as well. And he's faulting Hananiah and the priests and all the people who are listening at this point for not knowing what the Scripture said, right? As for the prophet who prophesies peace, uh, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, only when the word of that prophet comes to pass. Then it will be known that Yahweh has truly sent the prophet. So then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke bars from the neck of Jeremiah the prophet and he broke them. He had a a temper tantrum. He's sick and tired of hearing these negative words from Jeremiah calling people to repent of their sins. And and Hananiah has prophesied a suddenly, there's going to be a breakthrough. And within two years, the exiles of Judah are going to return, except for God didn't give any of these words. So Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says Yahweh, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within two years. Jeremiah the prophet went his way. But some time after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke bars from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet, the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah. You go tell Hananiah, thus says Yahweh, You have broken wooden bars but you have made in their place bars of iron. For thus says Yahweh, uh, Yahweh of armies, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put upon the neck of all these nations an iron yoke to serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. For I have given him given to him even the beasts of the field. And Jeremiah the prophet said to the prophet Hananiah, and listen to these words, listen, Hananiah, Yahweh has not sent you, and you have made this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, because you have uttered rebellion against Yahweh. And in that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah, he died. I'm going to note something here, and that is that what John Gray is doing here in manipulating these people in his greed and making them trust in words that God has not given him and putting on this show as if he somehow has some kind of a special birth, he is behaving as wickedly as Hananiah. And as a result of it, he should note, Hananiah did not end well. He ended terribly. And John Gray, if he doesn't repent of this nonsense, he will equally die in a way that is not well. The best way I can put it, God does not hold people guiltless who take his name in vain. And that's what John Gray is doing here. Have what you have, watch this, and are about to step into the greatest financial, spiritual, emotional, and relational season of your life. It's as if God is giving you keys to your new house. (sighs) Just exploiting these people with total greed. It's as if God is giving you a brand new set of plans to expand the business. There is resource coming to you before you can finish the prayer. God hasn't promised any of this stuff. We pray humbly the way Christ has taught us to the pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I'm telling you what's happening in my life so you can know what to expect in yours. Because if you're a sheep in this field, then the whole field is about to get blessed. I'm going to say something and I need you to put it in the chat feed. And then I need you to act like you heard me and praise accordingly. As it pertains to your life, the floodgates have opened. (sighs) Yay! How utterly sad. These people are being made to trust in words that are lies. God didn't send him. God didn't give him this word. He does not have a special miraculous birth. Uh, His life has not been curated up to this point to release this nonsense. This is... This is pure exploitation, manipulation, greed, 
and they're falling for it because they don't know their Bibles. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And I would like to give a quick shout out and a thank you to all the people who are members of our crew and support us financially. You make it possible for us to bring Fighting for the Faith to you and to the world. And let just to let you know, if you'd like to support us financially and join our crew, the link is down below in the description. And again, thank you for everybody who's made it possible for us to keep doing this important work. So until until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen.